Now then, people, and welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It is Wednesday, the 13th of July, which, of course, means Wednesday midweek fix will be live at 8 o'clock. Myself, JT, Max from Leeds Lately, and substitute for Lewis this week, Mr. Ollie Ward. Lewis is away on holiday, but make sure you join us at 8 o'clock live for that. We've got loads to get through, and just like this video, there is loads to get our teeth stuck into. So before we do, smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, and of course, hit that notification bell. I will be live as well this afternoon on Twitch throughout the day, so make sure you follow me on Twitch as well. The link is on the or in the description. So listen, we're going to talk about that, that position again, left back. Of course, we've known for a while now, majority, 95% of the fan base have wanted a left back, and it looks like the club are going to have to address that position because a lot of these Leeds United players are broken. <laughs> They're made of biscuits, Weetabix, whatever you like, whatever superlative. Is it a superlative? No, it's the opposite to that. I just had to Google the opposite to superlative and Nothing came up, so whatever objective you want to throw at it, basically they're broken, okay? Um, we know, like, about two weeks ago, um, maybe even less than that, Adam Pope came out and said that the club say they are happy to go with what they have in the left-back position. I've been pushing that narrative as well, just because of the conversation Leo Hielder had. We've got Strauch who can play there. We spoke to John from All Stats, aren't we, who said, you know, he doesn't really... Jesse doesn't favour marauding left-backs, if you like. He's happy to play centre-backs there just because of how his uh, system works. And it was frustrating for Leeds United fans because, as John also said, in the Bielsa system, the most vulnerable position was centre midfield. And we didn't address that situation for nine windows. You could argue the most vulnerable positions in a Jesse position are, of course, the wide fullbacks. Um, and we weren't going to address that. So, of course, Leeds United fans were, were becoming frustrated. But we have heard um, from over in Australia through a press conference that Junior Firpo is now injured and will be out for eight weeks with an MCL injury. Now, Leeds United, for me and for a lot of other fans, have the perfect opportunity now to address the left-back issue. We've tried a number of players there who can forget Debock, etc. It's just never really worked. The last decent left-back we had, dare I say his name, is, of course, Charlie Taylor. Um, you know, we need to take this seriously now and go for a left-back that can... Ideally a specialist, but we'll talk about a player that isn't a specialist that I think could fit them all just because of injuries elsewhere as well. Um, but we need to get someone who we know can be there for a while now, you know what I mean? Because for me, Junior Firpo continues to break down. Let's not forget, he spent about two years out of the game when he was injured previously at Barca. Now, just on Junior Firpo, Jesse Marsh confirmed uh, this morning or yesterday, if you're in Australia, I'm not too sure, time zones and all that sort of stuff. Um, but he confirmed that Junior Firpo would be out for at least eight weeks. He picked up the injury in the preseason clash with Blackpool. Uh, Jesse did say we're hopeful that it'll be faster because Je uh, Junior healed really, really quickly last time, but there's no guarantees with that, right? There's no guarantees with that. Um, and as a result, that's why he's not travelled to Australia. So, you know, the conspiracy theorists out there, I know even I touched on it myself, maybe it was the vaccination status. We have it now in black and white that it's not. He is going to be out for eight weeks and he's going to be missing around about the first month of the Premier League campaign, which isn't great. Um, now, in terms of solutions, what can Leeds United do? Well, we know that we've taken Leif Davis out to the Gold Coast. Um, we know that he's been touted out. We know that clubs are interested in him for around about a million. I don't see Leif Davis as being that left back. I'm not sure if he's of the required quality. But it's clear that any sale will be put on hold at the minute because obviously Leeds United don't have a left back. Um, you know, and Marsh has basically come out and not dismissed the idea now of adding more options to the squad in that position. We know Leaf will play there on Thursday. Let's see how he gets on. Um, Jesse said we've been looking closely at him. He's done really well in training. Whether or not that can transfer to the football pitch and, and real game football, let's wait and see, because we know he struggled at Bournemouth as well and they didn't take the option to take him. Jesse did say as well, we also have other solutions there in Pascal Strauch. And he mentioned Jack Harrison as well, which a lot of people have been saying for a while, and we've discussed it, that he could be used in a left 
wing back role. And um, a lot of people were saying that's set in stone, that's going to happen. But Jesse did say potentially, Jack. I don't think it's as uh, cut and dry as, as what everyone believes. And listen, I received a message yesterday, someone who was at the open training session. Big shout out, Luke Bargy. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. But Luke, who messaged me and said he was at the training session and Jack Harrison was used in the left back role. So it's something they're considering. Um, but you know, Jesse said we're evaluating that position because if we if we look at the options in the squad, we know Stuart Dallas, right? He's out yet for, you know, we don't know how long that's going to be. Um, you know, he's got surgery, he's still got the pot on his leg, yeah? Leo Hjeldi was an option there as well, but guess what, folks? He's injured. Okay, it's only a small calf continue contusion but it shows you that the the depth isn't quite there you know we've I guess the footballing gods have forced us into a position where we need to acquire a left back Liam Cooper's also played there as well and guess what he's injured yeah he's carrying a small Achilles problem he trained on his own as well that's been reported but also Luke uh, give me a heads up on that he was training on his own so there's an issue there and he's going to miss the clash against Brisbane Raw. So if you think about it, no Dallas, no Hilda. Cooper, if you must, but I mean, he has played there, but he'd be a last resort. Leaf, not too sure Premier League quality, no junior. And then you've only got Jack Harrison. And let's not forget, yeah, I know a lot of people will be bang on the Jack stuff, but he was our second top scorer. You are losing a lot of his attacking output. He's one of the players for me that transitioned really well into the Jesse Marsh system. And let's not forget, you've got clubs like Newcastle knocking at his door. For all we know, you know, Jack Harrison could see himself in the England setup, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if he's been played out of position, will he be okay with that? You know, we have to throw that in the mix and consider as well. Um, so this. I mean, they're the solutions within the current squad. We know left-backs out there. You know, Charlie Taylor's definitely one that would be available. We've been linked with Tagliafico in the past. There's talk of Reguion, but I think he's going on loan to Seville. I don't think Leeds would do that, but there are options out there. And then, of course, yesterday, as we discussed on the live stream, no smoke without fire, Chris Richards has been mentioned. Now, let's... Think about that a little bit more, right? Because we know Chris Richards' preferred position is centre-back, OK? Um, he wants to nail down that position in the uh, American setup after being injured. And what makes me think that Chris Richards has more legs than what we initially thought is the fact that Cooper's broke down as well, yeah? So if Cooper's got a small Achilles problem, if that persists throughout the season, and Strauch also can be deployed at left-back, Leo's injured as well. We're reducing the number of options here, right? Let's say, for example, we start the season with Strauch at left back, for example. Leo's out, you know, or you're, or you're then putting too much reliance on Leo Hilda and, and, and Strauch on the left side of your defence. Do you start with two right footers in Laurenti and Cock? What I'm saying, there's a lot of if, buts and maybes and a bit of a headache for the, for the head coach there in Jesse Marsh. Now, if we look at Chris Richards' profile, he's a bit of a Swiss army knife, yeah? He can play anywhere across the back line, okay? So maybe, you know, for me, it makes sense now that that name came out. You know, a lot of people saying he's not a left back, let's get a specialist. And I sort of agree with that sentiment. But when you consider that Liam could be out, you know, or has a, a, a long-standing problem, and we know he will break down during the season, you've got Leo, you've got Strauch, you know. What I'm saying is the situation where we're currently at, it's like, oh, damn, we, we do need defensive you know, reinforcements. We do need them. You know, we've sent Creswell out. Um, so Chris Richards gives you cover in every single defensive position by goalkeeper. So I think that could be a smart move for the football club. It's whether or not we can sell that to Chris Richards because he'll want game time. Of course, we have the ace in the pack that is Jesse Marsh. We also have Tyler Adams, Brendan Aronson, etc. Yeah, Chris Richards is the is the type of profile that Leeds United would look at. He's a great age, you know, let's not forget, he's still only is 22. Now, there is interest in Richards from other places like Palace, Southampton, a number of, you know, Spanish clubs. And he did have a great season on loan at Hoffenheim. I think he played 34 times across all competitions. He scored a goal, he got an assist, he's played for Bayern 10 times. You know, he's got a lot of experience. And I think it's definitely one to watch because, of course, we know Leeds United are the second coming of the USA men's national team, all right? And Jesse's big on player personalities and uh, and probably sees Chris Richards look, 
come over, we've got this player, that player, you know, you'll fit into the group. And like I said, he's a bit of a Swiss army knife. He could play anywhere against the back, uh, across the back line. So I believe that coming out and then we hear injury, 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 there's no smoke without fire, folks. There is no smoke without fire. And now that that's them defensive fragilities out of the way, let's talk about the striker position as well, OK? Because we know Patrick Bamford, for me, He's a little bit broken. Now, people levelled at me yesterday. Well, have you read the article of what Graham Smith's done with him, etc.? He says he's fine. Well, of course, they're going to say he's fine. You know, I have read it today. There was a bit of an injury update. Of course, we know he sat out the friendly against Blackpool in York, but did feature against Stoke. Straight away, that throws issues up for me. You know, I... I know it's a crazy comparison, but if you look at Ledley King, for example, he was missing training sessions and then playing. Uh, can Bamford play twice in a week is what I'm saying. That's something we need to consider. Um, he did play a uh, full part in the open training session, which is good. And he is expected to be involved against Brisbane Raw tomorrow. I will be doing a watch along for that. So make sure you join me. Uh, but Bamford spoke about last season and said he had issues in his ankle, his hamstring, his quads and his foot. Right. So the body's breaking down. You know, we know he had that plantar facilitis, an issue with his foot. I know I've murdered that. Um, he said that's plagued him for a while, but it is OK. You know, he's feeling that it's left him. He has issues getting up on the morning, etc. But it's OK. And he said, to be fair, it's fine. I'm able to train fully and do everything as normal. Um, he said it does put you out of sync a little bit and you have to build into everything gently. This is the point I'm making. There's an issue there with Bamford. The fact that he's having to build into everything gently shows that his body isn't what it once was. So, of course, there's an issue there. We know Leeds United are actively seeking a striker. We heard from Alex Crook on TalkSport that Leeds United have put in a bid. We'll have to wait and see. Jesse was pressed on the striker issue and he said we're working on striker options to bolster the attack. He said we are hopeful on several striker targets. So, of course, they're putting feelers out. They're having verbal discussions. We know about CDK. They're still holding out for that, although it looks like we've missed out. We know about Callum Mwendo. We heard yesterday about Joshua Xerxes. So, they're having these good conversations. And he said, we are definitely going to find one more striker. And I think that's very important. He said that once we get a striker, we have a really good squad. We have a really strong group. You then add to that a left-back. We've got a goalkeeper that we will go after as well. I think that would present a perfect window. But we know now that Rafinha is done. OK, enjoy your time at Barca, Rafinha. I hope it goes really well for you. But we'll start to see movement now, OK? And Leeds United are in the hunt for a left-back. And they're speaking to several strikers, OK? And, you know, Marsh said it's very, very promising. So it's just waiting to get one of them over the line. Look, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I want to know what you think about the left-back scenario. Do we look at the solutions within the club or do we have to go out and buy one, which I think a lot of us will agree we need to. Um, and then, of course, the striker option. Who would be your preferred option? Or for us, some new names in the hat that haven't been quite linked yet. Look, make sure you join us, of course, for Midweek Fix tonight. And then, of course, in the morning, we'll have the watch along for Leeds versus Brisbane Raw. Thanks for tuning in on Wednesday, the 13th of July. Join me on Twitch in a bit, and I'll see you later. Peace out. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds.